morning and welcome to worship. Things look just a little different this morning because we have new technology, which means you're either going to love it and you're going to tell us how wonderful it is or it's going to mess up and we're going to regroup and do it different next time. So please bear with us. We do hope that um, our sound and video quality will be better and um, lots of appreciation to Justin who has been working many hours um, on making this work and Scott who is um, running it for us this morning. Scott and Vera are up in the balcony. So your view from this morning is from up high in the balcony and welcome to worship. We're really glad that you're joining us for worship. If you are visiting with us for the first time, there's a pinned comment um, below and you, there's a link on it. If you could just click on that connect card link and we would love to know that you are joining us in worship. Also in that comment is our giving link and we would encourage you to click on that so that you can be generous with your gifts to Forest Hill. This week we do have a blood drive coming up on Thursday. You can sign up and the link will be in the email this week. It's also in last week's email, but we would encourage you to come out and give blood um, and Angie is coordinating that. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to nurse Angie. The youth have a couple things coming up that we need the congregation's help on. First, we will be doing blessing bags, and our blessing bags are going to go out to um, our homebound members of our congregation and those who need a little extra care and encouragement during this time. And we're asking that you bring donations at pickup on um, February the 6th, and you can bring those, and in the email there'll be a list of things that we are requesting, but it is a way that we can get involved in encouraging others, and the youth will be putting those together and delivering those. And also at Pickup, you can participate in a youth fundraiser. So Fat Tuesday is coming, and for many years now, the youth has done their pancake supper, and it has been so much fun, and so we're trying to rethink what that looks like. So the youth is going to be putting together Fat Tuesday pancake party kits, and you can sign up to get one of those. I think the cost is $15, and um, you can pick it up at pickup, and then you can enjoy it together with your family and send some pictures to us so we can celebrate together even as we are apart. Information on both the blessing bags and the pancake party pack um, will be in the email, so please look out for that. We have a lot happening and all of that can be found in our email. If you um, have not gotten onto our email list, you can call the church office or email us and we would love to get you on our list. So with all of those fun things that are happening, we come to worship, we come to celebrate, and we come to center our hearts. So may we begin worship in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving Lord, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks for the sunshine. We give you thanks for the ability to gather together in spirit, even though we are apart. And Lord, wherever we may be this day, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us, that you would calm our hearts and our minds, and that you would unite us, give us peace, so that in this time we may worship you with all that we have and all that we are. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
but for him his rage we can endure for lo his doom is sure one little word shall fail that word As we come to our time of prayer this morning, there are many prayers that we would lift up today. We want to remember Ron Wells. He um, passed away last Sunday morning, and a service of worship was held to celebrate his life um, on Wednesday. And so we continue to pray for Joan uh, at his death. We also want to remember Nidra Bryant and her family at her um, sister's death. We've been praying for Tefetal and she died this past week. So we lift up Nidra and their whole family. We want to lift up Jack Locklear. He um, has been hospitalized a second time um, with complications of COVID and he'll be moved to hospice um, probably tomorrow. So we lift up Jack. Uh, and Pat and their whole family at this time. Denise Sheets had uh, her breast cancer surgery on Friday. It went well, and she's at home resting and recuperating, waiting for um, the pathology report. So we continue to pray for Denise and for Gary. Tracy Press was hospitalized, <coughs> excuse me, this week um, with an infection, a wound he's been tending for a long time, and, um, but he's back home and recovering well. So we give thanks for his recovery and pray for that to continue. We also um, want to pray for Kathy Burridge. She was hospitalized over the weekend with some strange symptoms. Um, it looks like some severe arthritis caused some bad symptoms for her, but she's home now and recuperating, so we pray for her and her family. <clears throat> we also want to lift up, <clears throat> excuse me, lift up Pinky Rogers, who has contracted COVID for the second time. So we lift up Pinky and all of those residents at Five Oak. Um, just pray for her strength and health this day. And we continue to lift up Lindsay Sozeki. These and other prayers that we know are on your hearts. We lift them all as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come with all of the concerns on our hearts, we give you thanks for signs of hope, for words of hope that bring us comfort, even in the midst of so much uncertainty, even in the midst of so much challenge. God, we know that you are with us and that you are our hope. And so we look to those signs to those signs of your work among us, to those signs of healing, to those signs of restoration, to those signs of your presence. Loving God, we give you thanks that you are our hope. You are our light. You are our love and our salvation. Help us to cling to that in these days when we need it most. 
Loving God, we give you thanks that you are present with us on this side and beyond. We pray for those who are hurting this day. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are struggling with illness, for those who are coming to the end of their days. Loving God, we pray for your healing touch upon us, for those who are going through specific illnesses and surgeries, for those who are going through cancer treatment, and for all of us. Bring us healing and wholeness in mind, in body, in spirit. Loving God, we continue to pray for our nation. Continue to bind us together and help us to seek those signs of hope. Help us to seek those things that draw us together, not divide us, and help us to focus on those. Loving God, we pray for our world in the same way. Help us to seek brothers and sisters around the globe. Help us to know that we are one, one human family, created out of your love for us. Loving God, help us cling to that. All the prayers that are on our hearts, we know that you hear them. The small things, as well as the big, huge things that we bring before you, that we breathe to you, even when we cannot utter words. And help us to be people of hope. People don't, that don't just sit in our pain, that don't just stay in the place we are, but look to the signs that you put before us of a new dawn, of a new day, of new beginnings with each and every breath. Loving God, help us to be people of hope. We pray all of this in the name of the one who is our hope, in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory scripture this morning comes from 1 Timothy 6, verses 17 through 19. As for those who are in the present age rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides for us in everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. I continue to hear wonderful news from many of you that you are receiving your first shots of your vaccine and for some of you even your second shot of your vaccine and that makes me so happy and so hopeful. As I have watched the vaccine roll out in our community and even in other communities, I celebrate the incredible ways that people are coming together to help one another. This has been a challenging time in our history, but it has brought about some really wonderful ways that people are being generous. I am not sure if I have shared, but maybe you have heard at some point that Dolly Parton even got in on this, giving a million dollars to Vanderbilt University to help with the Moderna vaccine. And now that is one of the vaccines that is rolling out in our world that is truly making a difference. 
many of the doctors and the nurses that I know and that you know are stepping up to the plate to go and help give the vaccines. Nurse Angie had three long days this week giving vaccines, and I even know that she gave some of y'all your first vaccine shot. Our staff is working as hard as we can to get the information out. We are doing anything we can to help people get their appointments, to make um, copies of insurance cards, to help disseminate information because we want to get in on the act as well. And what I have seen in all this is that people truly want to be part of this, want to be part of something bigger than themselves, something that will change the world, that will bless others. It is truly a heart of generosity and service that this is bringing about in our world. And as I stand back and look at that, I can see that this is bringing about the kingdom of God, that this small act to so many people is changing lives, it is making lives better, and it is beautiful to see. God tells us that we are to love God and to love others and that we are to give generously and work in the world, give with our talents and our gifts, give whatever we can to make the world a better place. And we do that each and every day by using the gifts that God has given us, by using the resources we have, by looking at the things in our life and being grateful and saying, Lord, show me how to use the things that you have given me so that I can bring glory and honor to you. This week, in many different ways, I have seen so many people using the gifts that they have to bless others, and it brings joy and hope to my heart. As we come to worship, may we look at all the amazing gifts that God has given to us. May we look at our resources and ask God, how can I use the things that you have given me to bless others in powerful ways? And when we do, God will show us how to act faithfully and live generously. May we give with faithful and generous hearts. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 368, My Hope is Built. to 
stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from Him. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week as I was driving up I-85 on the way to Gay's funeral, I saw a billboard from Cracker Barrel and it said, comfort to go. And I thought to myself, if only comfort was that easy. If only I could run by Cracker Barrel and pick up comfort, how wonderful would that be? We seek comfort in so many ways in our life. What is it that you reach for when you want comfort? Maybe it's a special blanket or an article of clothing. Perhaps it is comfort food. Maybe a special place that just feels right. For me, it is a sweatshirt. When I began to think about what in life brings me comfort, I thought about this sweatshirt. And then I began to count up how many years this has been in my life, and I was shocked. This is almost 25 years old. I got it in my first year at Catawba College, and it has seen me through a lot of hard days. I can't even tell you how many days I have come home from the world to retreat in my home to put on this sweatshirt and grab a warm cup of tea. It truly has brought me a lot of comfort. When life feels stressful, I want things in my life that bring comfort, even if it's temporary comfort. This sweatshirt has been a source of comfort. And I am sure that beginning of pandemic, that was one of the first things that I reached for. When I decided that we're all going to, you know, have to be at home, I might as well be comfortable. I am sure that is one of the first things that I reached for. But I will tell you that that comfort was fleeting and temporary, and by at least the end of March, that had already worn off. I wanted something more substantial. I have noticed over the past year that the things that bring me comfort are very temporary, even more temporary than I once understood. I am tired of my comfort clothes. I am ready to put on an uncomfortable party dress and go out in the world. I have no more comfort foods to cook. My recipe list is exhausted. And even traveling to special places or going home to see my parents entails planning and even more stress. Our temporary comforts are just that, temporary. But the good news of God is that there is a hope that does not disappoint us, a hope that is not temporary, a hope that does not wane, a hope that comforts us when all else falls short. And that hope 
is our hope in God. The scripture this morning, it begins by saying, Oh, I must find rest in God alone because my hope comes from him. I talked a little bit about rest last week, but I think that we need to revisit rest because I truly believe that rest is a key to us finding and holding on to our hope. Rest comes in different forms. You have physical rest, emotional rest, and spiritual rest. Physical rest is easy. It's getting a good night's sleep, literally resting your body. Emotional rest is taking a break from stressful situations in life to retreat with the people that we love that give us energy and life. Spiritual rest is retreating with God without agenda to center ourselves in the very presence of God. And we need to find rest and restoration for our body, mind, and our spirit. I believe we have to find rest in all of these ways. They are all important. And I am convinced that if we are not well rested in each of these areas, it is hard to hold on to hope. Have you ever slept a full night and woke up tired? I know that I have. I have had that feeling it comes when I am not resting in other ways. It comes when I have not given myself emotional rest, when I have not had enough fun, when I haven't been with people who give me life, when I haven't laughed enough. All of those things, they give me emotional rest that is so very important. When I don't feel rested from sleeping, I often understand that it comes because I haven't taken time to rest in God. I haven't filled up my heart and my soul. I haven't allowed the presence of the Holy Spirit to nurture my heart and give me strength. I have neglected the, that, and I feel spiritually tired. When we don't rest and we are tired, it is very hard for us to live in hope. The scripture says, I must find rest in God. Not I can find rest or even I should find rest, but I must find rest in God. If we want to live in hope, we must find rest in God. We find that rest when we sit and wait for God, when we pray for God to speak to our hearts, when we call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit to shower down, to rain down upon us, to grant us peace, to wrap around us and envelop us and nurture our very hearts, when we call upon it, trust that God will do that and sit in expectation and wait on the presence of God. Hope is almost impossible, I believe, to live in when we are tired. But if we are to find our comfort and hope, we need to actively seek rest for our body, mind, and our soul. The scripture continues on and it says, Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. Comfort comes when we find our rest in the foundation of God. While life is going well, we work to build our foundation so that we have something to fall back on or rest in when we are tired and struggling. That foundation is the word of God that we put in our hearts. It is the experience of God in our lives. It is the places that we can hold on to when we are tired and weary. 
You see, so many times for me, I am thinking about the things that I need to do to build up my strong foundation, and when I am tired and weary, when I am desiring comfort, too many times I forget that that is the time that I have built this foundation for. That is the time that I can go and sit in those places that I can be refreshed and renewed because I've done the hard work. I love doing the hard work, but I need to be reminded that that hard work pays off when we don't have anything left, when we are tired, when we need something, we can go back and we can dig up those beautiful words that have spoken deeply to our hearts over our lives. We can rehash the words of Christ in our hearts. We can pull out our Bibles and go to those places that we have studied so many times before and read those words again and find hope and comfort and peace. We do the hard work of growing in faith so that that when we need it, we can rest in that place and find comfort. We can remember how good God has been to us. We can recount the many ways that we have been in the very presence of God, and that will bring comfort to our hearts. The scripture says, God is my rock and my salvation. God is the thing that I can depend on in the hardest times of life. We have built a good foundation and we need to use it to find our comfort. The scripture goes on at the end to say, all you people trust in him at all times. We can't find comfort unless we have trust. My sweatshirt is tried and true. I trust that it will be comfort. I experience that time and time again as I pull it out of the closet and put it on. It continues to be good. It continues to be trustworthy. It sounds a little weird, right? Trustworthy of a sweatshirt. We don't think about that, about our comfort things. But if we pause for a moment and think about the things that give us comfort in life, it are the things that are good and consistent. We trust them. Cookies, warm cookies, they make me feel good. They make me warm inside. Time and time again, as I pull them out of the oven and enjoy them with a glass of milk, they make me feel good. I know that experience. It brings about something good inside of me. It gives me comfort and rest. When I pull out my sweatshirt and make a glass of tea, that brings about comfort. It brings about a good feeling, and time after time, it is good and consistent. And the scripture tells us that we are to trust in God in the same way we are to go to God time and time again and bring all of ourselves to God, to trust that God will show up, that God will be good and consistent in our life. And here's the really cool thing. The more we do that, the more we practice that, the more we trust and know that God is faithful and God will continue to bring about good things in our life and God will comfort us and embrace us and love us and fill us up and empower us with the Holy Spirit. And then when we get to that place again, we have understood that we go back to God again. It's a beautiful cycle. The more we trust, the more we give all of ourselves to God, the more God does in our life, the more it strengthens us, and we do it over and over again, and that brings about rest and healing and hopefulness. And it gives us rest for our souls, and it comforts us in so many incredible ways. But we have to start somewhere. We have to take that step. We have to go to God and say, Lord, here I am. I need you and I trust you. I trust that you are good and consistent and I can give you every part of me. I can lay it down at your feet and I know that you will bring about something good. That is tangible hope. 
Our journey with God requires that we participate in the journey, and it builds upon itself. The more we trust, the more comfort God's presence will provide when life is hard, but we participate in the process. When our world feels anything but comfortable, we are reaching out for the things in life that bring comfort, but it is our faith that brings deep, consistent comfort. It is our faith that brings comfort when all of our temporary comforts of the world are exhausted. It is that hope that changes our hearts, that sustains us for the journey that brings about rest. But in order to have that hope, we have to participate in the journey. We need to find ways to rest and renew our body, our mind, and our soul. We need to rely on that foundation that we have spent so much time building when life was easier. And we need to lean into our trust in God. And I truly believe when we do those things, our hope increases, and we find the comfort our souls long for. God has poured out his Holy Spirit upon us to give us strength for the journey and to remind us that there is hope. And that hope does not disappoint us. Romans 15, 13 sums it up by saying this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in faith so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God give us hope. May God give us comfort and rest and remind us that God's hope does not disappoint us. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are so thankful that you give us hope. We are so thankful that we can bring our weariness to you and that you will grant us rest, that you will grant us rest in our body, in our spirit, in our souls. Lord, we ask that you would show us how to participate on the journey, that you will help us to not only find your rest, but to sit in your presence to be renewed in our hearts. Lord, show us what it looks like to trust you even more, to trust you even more in this day that we have in the past so that we can truly be comforted by your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you that even when the world is so temporary and fleeting, when we reach for things of comfort that do not sustain us, you are present with us and you offer us comfort that will always sustain us through your presence and your grace. Above all, Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the hope that you impart upon our hearts. It does not disappoint us. And for that, we offer you all of our thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this, this morning is hymn number 529, How Firm a Foundation. <laughs>
that God gives to us, and mostly the comfort that we seek in our God, a God of hope. Be in the world, in the love of God, in the peace of Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen. 